Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Harmor. This is part 15, and today we're going to be talking about the distortion. So I initially thought to make a effects video with everything included, but I didn't want to make such a long video and kind of skim over stuff, so we're going to do module by module and leave no stone unturned. So hopefully that's going to be a better method to explain this in than its entirety. So before we start with the first distortion thing, there's a couple things that you guys need to know if you don't already. On the far left here, you're going to see two sliders, this post and or this pre and post effects. These two sliders control the volume of your signal before it gets processed by the effects, or this is the signal that gets processed after the effects. So these two are here, use them as you need to. And then the other thing in the advanced tab here, we'll, we're going to go through this separately at another time, but for this video, you really need to notice that this effects order is located here. So it'll first go distortion, chorus, delay, reverb, dry mix, compression. So basically it's going to go left to right and then kind of swing down to the delay and then the reverb and compression, which does make sense because if you're in a room and something's delayed, you want to have that delay get affected from the reverb or the reverb affects the delay, you know, so your delays have reverb. So anyway, if you want to change this, you can either hover, hover your mouse over the name. So like distortion and I'll scroll my mouse wheel down and we can change the order of all of these. So that's how you're going to do that, which you probably already know from doing the unit order that we've kind of talked about or touched on a little bit on the previous videos. So that's how you do that. Just be aware of where things are. If you mess them around or change them, you, you know, that's located here. So let's go to our default and let's go to a default patch here. And to demonstrate the the distortion and the different types and all that, you'll notice that the oscilloscope here is much larger and then the spectrum view is much smaller because it doesn't really give us as much information as the oscilloscope will. So let's go to a default patch again, just in case I was defaulted and then let's right click timbre and then let's make this a sine wave so we can see the waveform a little bit better. And if you don't remember, we can scroll all the way in like this and then for a sine wave, we just need one fundamental, so one tone. So hold shift and then right click here so you don't change the value on accident. And then let's bring this all the way down and scroll out. Don't forget about this little guy up here, bring him down as well. And we'll just have a pure sine wave and it's just one tone. So this is this oscilloscope is going to be kind of our main focus window aside from the sliders and all that here, just so we can actually see and understand what the distortion is doing and what the different modules look like and sound like. So let's get started. Let's go to here for classic. You'll have 11 choices to pick from. So quite a lot, actually. And then all the combinations of the sliders, it, get, it, can, it can get pretty deep, even though it looks kind of minuscule. So small things come in a very large package sometimes. Remember that. So let's go to classic, right? And we can instantly see that we're having an effect already. So if we go to off, there's our sign and then classic is on or is having a little bit of effect. So our first slider is this amount. Now this is kind of saying how much of your signal will be distorted. So as we bring this all the way up to the top, it's gonna to eventually square wave and most of the distortions will do that. So you don't necessarily wanna think of this like, let's turn on our distortion and let's put the amount all the way to the top to get the best effect. It's not necessarily the best way to go about it. So if we drag this down a little bit here, we can still have some of that characteristic, but we can play around with other knobs and settings to enhance that. So next up, we're going to have this ASIM. So this is an interesting concept here. So what this is doing is it's changing the distortions characteristic in either a symmetrical mono way or a asymmetrical stereo way. If that's kind of confusing, let's check it out and let's watch here to see what it actually does. It'll make much more sense in a second, I promise. So we have our tone going on here. And if we drag the slider up, it's the same distortion effects per se, but it's changing the waveform a little bit, making these cycles a little bit shorter or these ones a little bit longer. And if we change the separation, if we go down, we can see that it's basically the same waveform on the left and right. So giving that mono type of distortion feel. Here's the cool part. When we pre press this note, let's drag the slider down. And now we can see it's not mono anymore. It changes. So it's different on the left and the right there. And if we freeze that here, so we're gonna have to listen to it the whole time. You can see it's the same type, but it also slides this over here. So it's giving almost an equal distortion effect. And the cool part about this is that it's, it's distorting this part here on the left, on the right side. And then it's distorting this part here on the left side, but not on the right. Very interesting kind of thing. And depending on how much you move that, you'll have the different types of effects. So if we watch this, we can see how that changes. So a subtle effect can go a long way. So that's what ASIM does in a nutshell. I highly recommend to kind of use it sparingly for really cool distortion sounds that you already have built because it can add a really cool characteristic to it. So next up we have wet. And it's kind of, as you think, like a wet and kind of a dry more of this distortion here. 
Let's change the separation so we don't get confused. So that's more and more of that distortion going through. The next step we have a mix and these two can be almost similar but the difference is if this is in the center here you're going to have your signal mixed the more you go up toward the top the more you hear the original signal and all the way up at the top is just your regular sine wave and then you'll think okay this is bipolar and if you didn't already know it's just going to do the opposite so if i bit up here and i drag it really quick down it just changes the polarity 180 degrees now anywhere in between is going to be the mix of your distorted signal and the mix of your clean signal. All right, so the last one here is this filter, pretty self-explanatory, but I think often it's unlooked because sometimes I don't know if you've tried to put a distortion on and then it's like, oh, all the top end just went away, what happened? And that's this filter slider right here. It automatically comes at a default of 11,839.82 hertz, which is kind of a strange number to, if you know, it's weird. But anyway, that's where it comes as default. If you want to go to the very top and then you don't have any of that filter on, you're going to hear that full top spectrum. So keep in mind, that's what that little fader here does. So if you don't want any of that effect, then turn it off. If you do, leave it on. It's up to you. It's your patch. So moving on, let's go to, well, let's stay on Classic and kind of look at it just a little bit before we start diving into these other ones here. So Classic, like we talked about before, let's put all these back to default here. It's kind of just your Classic. It's kind of just chopping off, rounding off the top a little bit. Not too fancy distortion, but it's Classic. Hey, you know, it's got the Classic sound, right? And remember, like I said before, most of the distortions with the amount all the way up, it's just going to square wave and you're kind of going to lose, you're going to lose a little bit of the specific individual characteristic of the distortion. So let's leave it maybe around here so we can kind of see what's going on there. And as a little AB, that's our sine wave. That's our classic distortion. So next up, let's go to Hill. And we can almost instantly see if we went close with these, they're very similar, but also different. And then moving on, we have flat hat, which is almost a little bit flatter than your classic. If we go to our classic and we click flat hat, we can almost see these tops here get just a little bit more straight edge right there. A lot of these moves of the different waveform are kind of subtle for these first ones, but they do get more intense through these other ones. Next we have Q, let's switch to Q from uh, flat hat. And as you can guess, it's, it almost resembles a cube. And if we had our ASIM almost mono here, and bring these down here, it can almost look like a cube. Kind of like that. <laughs> if we're looking at this right here, kind of funny. Okay, moving on, we have log. And I really like this one. My two favorites of all of these are either going to be log or rubber. Those are my go to. But it's totally preference. So that's almost kind of a rounder type of type of distortion than the other ones, even on the bottom end as well. And then moving on, we have sat, soft sat, short for saturation. And while it is important to look and see what it's doing to the waveform, let that not be a distraction so you don't forget about hearing it. Because sometimes if we look at things with our eyes too much, we kind of forget what things actually sound like, which is the most important part. And then moving on, we have the rubber, my personal favorite. And you can almost see it looks more so like a wave folder, how it folds these waves at the top. Which is an interesting sound, almost that looks kind of like Batman a little bit, right? And then with ASIM, it can get really cruel. Very interesting. This one can sound very aggressive if you're going for that type of sound. And then next up, we have ribbon. And we could almost see that here on this side, it might be hard to see on the video itself, but if you go and try this and look at the ribbon, you can see here when this going down, you can see it almost has a little bit of a jitter to it. And then moving on, we have Sign Crush. This is where things start to get interesting. It almost makes the waveform look shaky and kind of wobbly. And then as we move the ASIM, we can see that a little bit more, which then it almost looks like it's doing a wave folder with a Sign Crush, which is a very cool thing to figure out because you're almost 
it's kind of like an, a combination between the ribbon one we did, this wave folding, and then the sign crush has that type of effect to it. If we don't want that, we can just drag that back up to the center. And then moving on, we have bit crush. And this is very obvious what it's doing here. Let's bring this up here a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit easier to see here. It's totally not making the waveform straight at all anymore. So it's giving that almost that sample and hold kind of pattern style to it there. And it actually sounds very cool. Sound really cool with some unison and some legato, maybe a little bit of delay, but we'll, we'll get there guys, we'll get there. And then last but not least, we have bit jam, which is similar to the other one, except the it almost looks like the algorithm or whatever you want to call it is slightly different in the sense that this here at the at the bottom here is going to be a bigger step, and it goes smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it mirrors it on the top and does the exact opposite there. So definitely has a slightly different sound to it. Almost a little bit, kind of more mechanical. But then that's mechanical too. Totally preference, but that's these distortions in a nutshell. Hopefully this video kind of maybe demystified it or kind of went a little bit deeper. All these modules are very, very cool. They look small and kind of not really much, but if, once you get deep into them, they have a lot to offer and they have a lot of cool sounds to go through. So highly recommend to experiment those and we'll see you in the next video.